So welcome back to YNS Live with NFL Thread. I am here with my co-host, Cynthia Zordich, and a very special guest, Ashley Smith, who is the manager of player engagement. How are you guys? We're great. So excited to be with you all today. I know. I do like Ashley's um, background, right, Sin? It's like, it's almost like futuristic. It's like really relaxing. (laughs) (laughs) The glass here in the conference room at the league office. Ashley, what I'm really excited is about you were at the Thread event in Vegas. And I know Cynthia has shared a little bit of what you guys are doing, but how I want to start this, because this is what I always love, stories connect us. I would love for you to go back and tell us a little bit about where you grew up and kind of how this all evolved, but we'll get into the story, just a little bit about your you know, childhood. Yeah, sure. So I'm Ashley Smith. I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, which for those of you that don't know, Jackson is two hours from Memphis, an hour from Nashville. And so I kind of how I developed my love for sports is that um, I grew up a huge women's basketball fan. And so when I had an opportunity to go to college um, and when it was like my senior year of high school, I was being recognized at an awards ceremony and Joan Cronin, who at the time was the women's athletics director at the University of Tennessee, um, I was just say I was debating between University of Tennessee or Alabama. And she said, what could I do to get you to UT? And I said, if I had an opportunity to work for Coach Pat Summit, it's a done deal. Um, And so I had a chance to serve as a student manager with the Lady Vols basketball program for a total of four years. So my first three were with Coach Summit during her last three years and then um, became the head student manager my senior year. And so that experience really mm-hmm. developed this love and passion for sports. So I went on to work at the NCAA um, in the championships and alliances department. So my job was to plan national championships and different sports. So was there for three years, planning everything from like men's and women's Final Four to D2 track and field, D3 field hockey. And during the time, my brother was being recruited for football. And so, you know, my, we also lost our mom unexpectedly during that time. And so I went mm-hmm. from kind of a hands-off big sister, knowing that as he was going to, um, you know, different programs to visit during recruiting visits, my parents had it to where, okay, we don't have our mom now. Let me step up and kind of fill that gap as best as I could. And so as I was going around to different universities with my dad and my brother, I noticed that I didn't really see a lot of women working in football um, to the degree that I would have liked, right? And so I just kind of said, okay, here's an opportunity to come and learn. And so what I did too is that when people's coaches started asking, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, you know, I, I'm I'm intrigued by football. I, I don't know too much about it, but coming to these places have an interest. And so um, that is kind of what started my, you know, jump into football. I worked at the University of Tennessee, um, started out as the executive assistant to the head football coach, then became the director of football administration, um, went to student athlete development for two, back to football as an assistant athletic director, left, interned with the Kansas City Chiefs doing player personnel, so a lot of scouting, and then landed my current role today as a manager of player engagement at the league office. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Sin, go ahead. Well, I love it because, you know, going through the recruiting process with my sons, um, what I noticed from both my my husband and myself is that we were so drawn to those academic liaisons to the program and also to the facilities that they had for these, you know, players uh, where we were just that was what got us most. And it always, and, and it did seem like there were a lot of women in those roles at that time. So I was really loving that and that connection. So to me, that had to be um, just empowering to be there for those, you know, to be a part of those programs that are set up to make these players succeed in a busy, busy schedule. It was, it definitely was. And it's still, you know, my current role, um, similar to what you kind of alluded to, Cynthia, my job is to work with current players and former players, which you all know we call NFL legends, um, and really be a resource for them as it relates to their personal and professional development. So if a guy is, you know, a father, how do we look into what are the resources that we have available, um, you know, to help fathers? Or let's say a guy, you know, went into the league and didn't finish his education and get a college degree, or maybe he has his college degree, but he wants to take the next steps and get a master's or an MBA. So we'll work with guys in that regard. And then 
my main focus um, is personal and professional development. So kind of, you know, a big thing that I'm gearing up for next week, we'll head out to LA, we'll have our career tour. So we're working with Hidden Empire Film Group to kind of look at, okay, we have guys that are interested in entertainment. Can, how can we teach them if you want to become an actor, producer, director, what that looks like? Mm -hmm. um, we have our broadcasting media workshop for guys interested in broadcasting. So really my role is to look at what are the areas of interest for, for players and legends, um, personally and professionally, and then how can I provide an experience? How can I connect them with experts? And then also provide a level of education. So then whether guys are still playing or they have you know, retired from the league, they're now able to see a tangible next step of what life could look like for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the, one of the things that I think is so important that I love about all the, the th all your pivots, right, all the things that you have done is it gives people listening an idea of what's out there because so many careers, so many jobs, people don't even realize exist. And mm -hmm. I always say, um, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I started all my podcasts is because when you have a passion, sometimes that passion actually can turn into your career. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You know, a lot of times people think, okay, you have a passion that's going to lead into starting my own business. Now, not everyone wants to start their own business. So when right. you have that passion, I love that you had kind of that mentor that was like, how can I help you shape what I want to do? And so then you got to kind of pick around and, you know, I'm sorry to hear about your mom because that had to be really hard, mm -hmm. but what an opportunity for you also to be there for your brother and your dad because of kind of the knowledge that you were you were obtaining and your, your mom looking down on you saying okay I knew she got it right I knew she got it someone's got it it's such yeah. a beautiful thing and that your brother can say you know because you have the experience because knowledge is when, when you're at educated and you have that knowledge, that's when you can move forward. And there's so many things that we do not know. I'm, I just went through the recruiting process for my son. Now it was in soccer, which is a little different. He's going to Newberry, um, which is a D2 uh, school, but he had all these injuries before and we didn't know what we could say. And it's, it's a really hard time for not only the student athlete, but then also for the parents to be like, okay, how do we navigate this? Mm -hmm. What, what do we do right? So to have the knowledge that you, that there's people out there that have that role. So like if someone's starting the recruiting process, reach out, right? Look at the organizations you're looking at and reach out and say, Hey, I heard this podcast and there's someone that had this role. I didn't know about it. And that's just going to help people kind of grow and do more things. I mean, one of the things that I love, that's what Cynthia does so much with NFL thread, um, which is, you know, the knowledge of it, you know, for the, for the women, right? It's like here, this is, I've been through this. I was, you know, I was a, a wife for 12 years in the league. So I yeah. can tell you what my experiences were, but I also can set you up with people like Ashley, because I know the inner workings. I know what Ashley and her group are doing. I know Ashley's background. I know her skills and I know what she can help you do. So it's so important for someone listening to this as well, who knew about the career opportunities that you have there, right? It's like, if you wanted to be in entertainment, that's again, because knowledge is power. And when you have that, it makes life a little less scary. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. And, and I think to your point too, um, it's been incredible working with Cynthia. And it's also been um, just really inspiring to see just the wealth of knowledge and experience that Cynthia has, but even having an opportunity to attend the Thread event in Vegas, the relationships, right? Mm -hmm. um, the saying is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And as I watched Cynthia I just kind of navigate the room, I was like, oh my gosh, like, yes, this woman is knowledgeable. She has great relationships and, you know, partners throughout the league and, and beyond. But people know that Cynthia cares about them. She's fighting and advocating to put them in the best position possible so that they can then utilize the resources that the NFL has, whether their husband, you know, is a legend and whether he, you know, someone that the world knows or not. It's like, hey, you've earned this, but also for the women you've stood beside your husband through thick and thin, like you have earned the right to have access to the sisterhood. And so I just want to give you a know, major kudos to Cynthia for what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. And you know, it's funny because going to back to what you said earlier, and the fact that the coaches, when you were helping your brother through recruiting, asked you what you wanted to do. And the fact that that conversation started right there mm -hmm. is just proof that there's people out there that are in positions to help us kind of create what we want to do or get there, help us get there. And um, all these 
all of these situations where whether it's a magazine or an event, it's conversation, it's storytelling, it's, hey, this is what you can do. And putting all of the girls and for you, like it has to be really awesome meeting the NFL women and seeing how much talent there is out there and how much passion there is and how many beautiful organizations and individuals. And you're right, whether people know who their husband is or don't, they're creating names for themselves. And like you being there to be able to say, hey, I'm glad to be here to meet you because this is what, what I'm doing now, which is new but exciting and it's going to help elevate you even more, you know? For sure. And I think just as much as I hope, you know, in meeting the women, having conversations, they're learning from me. I can honestly say that I'm learning from them. Um, as I'm, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, or maybe I didn't, but, you know, my brother currently plays with the Chiefs. So at some point, his NFL career will come to an end and I'll be along for his transition out of the league and, and what comes with that. And so I think what I appreciate and would encourage women to do is, one, continue to show up, continue to get involved with Thread and, or, and other organizations that, you know, have a ready-made sisterhood that's, that is available to welcome women with open arms, but also share your story. Um, mm -hmm. Just have it to meet women at the threat event and just listen to the things that they've been through and, and even going from maybe some a little bit of was like okay I'm supporting my spouse and then I came to a crossroad of what do I want to do with my life what do I want to do with my career you know now that I've now that I have a chance to focus on me I think sometimes women and just in general sometimes we find ourselves a little intimidated to, to share our stories, the good and the bad of what may come from that. And I would just tell women, continue to show up, mm -hmm. continue to share, because you never know how you're inspiring other women. You never know how you're helping the next woman that's sitting beside you. Mm -hmm. that's and, and, you know, when, when, and just to bring it back to Cynthia again for thread, I mean, the thing that's, so beautiful, but there was a need, right? Cynthia was like, I know what I went through because of experience. And that's where these events are so wonderful, as you said, because it can teach people, hey, just because I went through this doesn't mean you're going to go through the same things. However, I can give you my experience. I can share my story, which you might then, you know, as you're going through this, be like, aha, wait, I can do this a little different because I heard the story and I connected. I connected with someone that's been through it. And I think that's what's so important. Um, because again, stories connect us, uh, you know, whether it's something that we learn from it, something we take from it, something that we, we learn from it, you know, or, or use it down the road or just, Hey, that's interesting. I, I can, I can see where that person's been. I can put myself in their, you know, foot, their shoes for a little bit. So I think that's great. I, Ashley, I would love for you to just like take us a little bit through. I know you uh, do some stuff with the women's community. And so if you can take us through what that is all about. Yeah, sure. So I am a co-lead alongside Ces Cecily Tafoya. Um, and so back in, I guess, last year in um, 2023, Troy Vincent said, hey, I want to, I see so many women that are involved in the NFL, whether they're working at the league office and clubs or looking at, you know, player moms, spouses. I need a way to bring everyone together, but also to provide, you know, to streamline communication. So that way women are knowledgeable on events and resources and initiatives that the league is offering. And so you know, we've just been pounding the pavement um, to really bring to life this NFL women's community. And um, it has been such a joy to work on. Um, what we really do is that we focus on serving as a platform that's a central resource hub. So let's say, for instance, at you know, Combine, we did the Combine Happy Hour for women who are working in football operations. We had over 60 plus women um, to show up and be a part of that. You know, with the threat event that Cynthia had, um, we sent, you know, some women's community merch. So that way people can go out and utilize like what we've given them and, and help to really just market and brand and raise awareness of the community. And then also we gifted women and player engagement. Um, this year at the at the player engagement annual meeting, we had 25 women, which is the most women that have ever um, served in the history of player engagement to be in the room. And so we gifted them with a free one year membership to women leaders. And so what we're trying to do is, like I said, focus on providing networking opportunities where women can 
you know, can come together. Um, and then also trying to provide personal and prof professional development opportunities. And I forgot to call this out too. We also, um, when we had Pro Bowl earlier this year, worked with PIFMA, so the Professional Football Players Mothers Association. Yeah. Um, yeah, to connect with different moms that were there. During Super Bowl week, we attended um, the Off the Field Wives Association's fashion show, which we absolutely love every mm -hmm. single year. That's incredible to see, you know, different legends' wives walk down and kind of show off their sense of style. And so um, also there was a celebrity flag football game, that thread. And so Cynthia and her team hosted. So it has been just an honor and a privilege to be able to work on a project that brings so many women that are part of the NFL football family together. Exactly. Like, to me, that is what I love most. And, you know, and what I always say is that thread is just that connection, connecting to so many wonderful, not only individuals, like I said, but programs, organizations. So I love the fact that it's like promote, promote, promote what would each other do, because it's we we all are going to be affected or inspired or empowered or get knowledge from all of these different groups. So, of course, you know, NFL player engagement and Troy always near and dear, like to my heart and that I always feel that Troy always embraces all of my ideas, you know, no matter what it is, he's like, oh yeah, let's like, like do it, you know, like get it done, do it. And so I always feel like with that, and he also is one to say, you need to meet this person, you need to meet that person. And so of course through Troy is where, is how I met, you know, Erica Lassiter at Off the Field. And so with that, my journey with Off the Field has been like almost for a decade now. And you know, they're my second family, you know, being on the board, you know, serving as the president, it's like, what an honor. And what, a, what an opportunity to make sure that everybody knows um, what's happening with Off the Field. Because, for instance, like at the Super Bowl events, not everybody that registers to come to the luncheon is a member of Off the Field yet. <laughs> it's right, like, yeah. wait a minute. And so um, when Troy contacted me about the NFL women's community, I was like, oh, my goodness. Yes. What can we do? Like, what can I do to help promote? What can I do to help promote the women's community so that everybody knows about it? And for me, it's just another opportunity to say, hey, Thread members, here's your resources right here. Here it is. Click away. Here's all of your resources. But also, you know, NFL flag, these little girls are, are playing now. They're going to become the future. You, Ashley, they're going to become the future of football, you know, with wanting to be general managers, you know, wanting to be in the, in the, in the offices, whether it's marketing, whether it's, you know, being the president, whether it's being a coach, um, you know, so I feel like the women's community isn't, um, it's all women. It's all women who really love the game, who want to be a part of the game, who want to work within the game. And to me, like that is so exciting. And like, I just love the fact that we can even like through not only through um, podcasts like this, but through events, through conversation, through sharing links, through, you know, anything, promote what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. And I will say this, Cynthia, you have been an incredible partner. Um, for those who don't know, every month we send out a monthly newsletter um, with information and updates on events and resources and initiatives for, as you mentioned, all women. So whether you're working at the league office and clubs, if you are a significant other, if, you know, so a player's wife or girlfriend, or, you know, if you are a player's mom. And so, um, Cynthia, thank you for every month, you know, you're sending information, whether it's, you know, women having information on how to join Thread or upcoming events. And, so, and that's what we want. We want people to feel that, okay, we can utilize or access this newsletter and, and join Thread and get involved and be a part of that sisterhood. So I can't thank you enough for just being an incredible partner to us. Beautiful. When I and I hope to do more for you too, and I look forward to everything. So and I know and so do so do we at off the field. You know, feel the same way because for all of us, it's like yeah, let's grow together. You know, and so I love it. One of the things that I think is important is um, when people are listening back to this because you know when I started this with Cynthia, I remember the first Super Bowl, and. Uh, we, we had the luncheon and it was awesome. And we had, you know, everyone jump on and kind of go. And I remember the first fashion show. So that was LA. And I 
we were doing some of behind the scenes and Cynthia said, let's just get some of the, the stories. And I remember, and I'm not going to name the, the person, but I went up to someone that her, her husband, people know him. Right. So I said, can you introduce yourself? And she said her name and then who her husband was. And I stopped, I go, Oh no, no, no. I go, Oh, that's great. I mean, great. You have, <laughs> your husband's very successful. I said, but who are you? And she went, wait, what? And she literally got like, uh, she's like, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. No one's ever asked me this. And I said, what do you mean? No one's ever asked you this. I said, no, I want to know about you. Like, what do you do? Do you stay in with the kids? Do you have a job outside? And it took her a second to collect herself. And then she told me what she did. And I was like, oh my God, she had like her own business. That was like enormous. And I uh -huh. said, I looked at Cynthia and I said, I can't believe that just took place. Like my heart hurt, you know, because I was like, no one ever asks about the spouse. And yes, these a lot of these events are about the husband, but it takes a very special woman to be able to set aside and love mm -hmm. their husband and, and not be able, and, and, and sometimes, I mean, because there's been some events where, you know, women will come up to us afterwards and just say, thank you so much for doing this because I've been pushed away. Like I've actually been pushed away in a situation. And I'm like, oh, I had to that. I would not do very well in that position because I'd be like, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I would be fiery. But it, it's, it's, you have, it takes a special soul to be like, I know what this is, I know where I, you know, I know where, who I am and how I can help in these situations. So sharing these stories and letting the women know you're not invisible in this world, right? You're That's not right. invisible in this world. You are someone, you're actually holding the forts down. You know, so many mm -hmm. of the interviews that Cynthia and I have done with the husband and wives, it's, it's so beautiful because it's a side that a lot of times the media doesn't put out the husband is like just an awe of, of his, of his wife, of his woman and thankful. Yeah. And they don't pick that up. And that's what I think in this world we need more of. We need more of those stories saying, you know, that's why I love doing the red carpet at, at the off the field. And I will always say, you know, you guys come together and they, the guys know now. Um, and you know, I'm like, it's nice to see you, you know, go, I'm going here first. And then, right. but then I would I always love to ask is what does this mean? And to you to watch your wife and support your wife today. And and the smiles from the men are like, it's so true. And they're so happy to be able yeah. to do it. They're so happy to say, you know what? I want to be here supporting you. You've done so much for me. And it's just such a beautiful thing to capture. And so what both of you guys are doing, I think is really important. And, you know, we're in a world right now that... Um, a lot of times things are thrown down our throats, right? And, and, and sometimes it's like, well, no, we need to have a woman in this position because we need that, that woman there. And I sometimes right. have a hard time with that because it's like, well, if the woman's not qualified, don't just give it to her because she's a woman. Like, let's right. see the, the person that's there. Let's see who is qualified, not because they check your boxes and more of this by people telling and sharing their stories and being able to connect and saying, this is what I'm worth. This is who I am. This is why I want to connect with you is what you guys guys are doing. And I think it's so important and, and sometimes not acknowledged enough. So thank you both. You it's are our so pleasure. Well. <laughs> I, I get a little fiery there. <laughs> I, love no, it. I do. And, um, you know, Ashley, so what are like, this is incredible where you are and like, what are your goals? Like your own personal goals, like for your future? What are you thinking? Yeah. Oh, goodness. That's a <laughs> tough question that I get sometimes. And and I'll say this. Um, I feel like when I was younger and especially when I first started my career, um, you know, if I'm totally transparent, again, being a women's basketball lover, I thought that, OK, my career would just skyrocket in the women's basketball world. And now I've become a football girl. And so um, I, would, I would say this. Um, where I am, I totally enjoy working with players, working with their families. I'm definitely a people person. Um, I think now my mindset has shifted from, okay, where do I want to be versus what are the skills that I need to develop? So that way, you know, if there is an opportunity to be a president of an NFL club or, you know, to be a senior leader here at the league office, what do I need? So I think right now my focus is looking at how can I expand my knowledge around NFL global and what's taking place from a global perspective. And then also looking at, I think that anytime um, an individual woman or, you know, man can add 
revenue generating experience to their belt, I think it just helps to make them, you know, even more dynamic than what they are. And so that is my focus. You know, I have developed a strong heart and a love for the NFL. And, um, you know, Juliet kind of alluded to it a little bit of that. Yes, I'm knowledgeable. And, you know, my professional experiences have given me an opportunity to be a resource to people due to that. But at the same time, I'm living this out with my sibling. Yeah. So, you know, I would love to continue to grow and be a woman who I hope my motto is always lift as you rise. So, yes, I definitely want to advance my career for sure. And as I mentioned, you know, would love to become a senior leader in this office in whatever capacity that would look like or, you know, maybe become a president at a club. But right now I'm like, okay, let me just learn and develop different skills. Let me raise my hand to work on projects and serve on committees that would give me um, some skills that I currently don't have. I'd love that. I, I need to. And it's exciting because I think about the girls that are listening and, you know, and, you know, you want to share that. And even all the NFL women that will be sharing this podcast with that might be thinking, wow, you know, I could be I could be doing something. And I remember at one point, I think it was the Bridge to Success program was what it was called at the time. Yeah. And I remember um, one of the leaders said it's important like right now as a player, a current player or spouse, is your opportunity to pick anybody's brains about what they do. Nobody's going to say they don't want to have lunch with you. Nobody's going to turn you down for a meeting. And I was just curious if you ever find yourself seeing what people do and saying, hey, can, can we just like talk? Can we have a conversation about what you do? All the time. I have thinking just this week, I have three meetings that are just that, right? (laughs) Because I think that Yes, you want to always be, you know, a constant learner of, you know, what are the different things that are taking place in this office? Um, You all, I say you always want to be a connector of people, right? So by learning what people are doing, by learning who people are, it's an opportunity for you to connect, you know, different people. Um, And I just think, too, that it's so important to build a community. Um, you know, we're all busy in the throes of, you know, all things that are NFL that are taking place here. Um, but again, I think it's great to meet people, kind of find, you know, where, where are some areas that you align and have some similarities. So then, you know, there have been times where I've had tough days here and I'm able to go down a floor and talk to a friend or maybe, you know, call them at night and kind of say like, hey, I went through this today. How would you handle moving forward? Like, what are the ways, any advice that you have for me? And so, yes, I I think it's so important. I think sometimes too, people can get so in a place of, oh, I've made it to the NFL. And it's like, great, being at the NFL definitely is an accomplishment, but like never be too good or or too comfortable to where you're not putting yourself out there and going beyond your comfort zone to connect with people to build community um and just to learn so absolutely i have coffee i call them coffee chats whether they're yes. over coffee or not but i have them all the time i love that oh, beautiful. Well, and you know one of the things that we do talk about on this um podcast a lot for like anyone that's young that's listening that might you know accidentally kind of get this podcast and be like oh wait uh, it's about the connection. I mean, human connection is so important and saying yes in a capacity if there's an opportunity out there and being aware of what's going on out there, right? Sure. If you run into someone, ask, you know, ask questions, be that person. And so one of the things, you know, raising three teenagers and, and all different personalities, one of the things I always want to say, because some are a little bit more outgoing than others. And so, I, I'm obviously a very outgoing person, and, and one of and I'll, one of my children will mention that. Like, I'm not always like you. You know, you're you're very you go out. You don't mind doing that. And I always I always remind them. I'm not going to call them out <laughs> since I have two boys and a girl. If I say it would be very <laughs> obvious. But I always say you don't need to. But once you're comfortable, you need to be comfortable in your own skin and know what you can bring to the table. And it doesn't mean that bringing to the table is something that someone is going to use you or you're using them, bring yourself and be comfortable. And so one of the things that I say to this, this child of mine is just knowing you and being curious and you don't have to be an extrovert. So anyone's listening to this being like, you know, I can't do what Ashley does because I'm not, I don't love to 
be, you know, talking all the time. I'm, I'm more of an introvert. You can be an introvert and still make connections that you're comfortable with. And that's where it's so important to put yourself out there and learn. And so if you have control of that meeting, right, if you're the person that's the introvert listening, being like, oh, my God, this is so uncomfortable, but knowing, okay, I have these goals in life. These are the things I want to do. Who can I connect with that I can learn from, but do it on my own terms so I feel comfortable enough instead of like the extrovert. Like if someone says, hey, do you want to have coffee? I don't care who you are. I'll have coffee with you. And, you know, I don't drink coffee. I'll have tea, but I can talk about anything. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a president of the United States or a janitor, like I can do that. Not everyone can do that. So knowing and be comfortable with who you are, but also knowing what you want out of the conversation and not in a, in a, um, in a negative way, because you don't want to go into a conversation being like, I'm using you for the information, right? It's no, it's about a connection. It's about, let's talk, let's grow, let's think, let's, let's grow together, as Cynthia always says. And I think it's really important for people to hear that. I totally agree. I I think that, you know, I'm fortunate where I have, you know, an opportunity to speak with young professionals all the time. And that's definitely a piece of advice that I give them. Yes, when you're going into conversations with people and, you know, there's an opportunity, do your research, come prepared, have an outline of, okay, what am I ultimately hoping to get out of this conversation? Whether it's, you know, developing a relationship or a connection, but then also maybe there are some things, whether it's, hey, could we potentially meet regularly and regularly and start like a mentorship um, relationship, whatever that looks like. But I tell them all the time, just be you. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that are supposed to be your tribe, the people that are supposed to be connected to you, they will love you and they will resonate with you. And there are times where I tell them, hey, you may reach out to someone. They may not respond. You may reach out, have a conversation and find out, you know, uh, I don't really think that they're the person for me or I'm the right fit for them. That is OK. Yeah. But you mm-hmm. want people to connect with you and to love you for you. And people can read through BS anyway. You have to be authentic. You have to be authentic. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it eliminates any potential stress of trying to put on this mask to to be someone that you're not. And so I say all the time, like, just be yourself and know that who you are is enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from there, the people that grab hold of that and come to love you, amazing. And the ones that don't, it's their loss. Their loss. Mm -hmm. I love that. And the other thing is, And this, I think, is so important. If you're on the other side of it and you're the mentor and somebody reaches out to you and maybe you can't have coffee, maybe you can't have the conversation, maybe you are too busy, just have the grace to answer Mm -hmm. and to say, I wish I could. I'm not available. Maybe you know somebody else that would meet them for coffee. You know, if somebody asks you for an opportunity or, you know, to help you like, hey, I want to I, I see you have an opening can we have a conversation and you know that it's filled and you can't help them just be graceful and say, you know, gracious and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you, but I wish you the best of luck. You know, just get back. So to true. People. Sin. Mm-hmm. This, when you're looking and it's not happening, there's nothing more frustrating when you just don't get, you know, for people that are out there. And I know that happens a lot like in the coaching world, you know, it's like, always. And I always pride my husband in the fact that he gets back to every single person that texts them and it's like, I hear you. I got it. I'll push. I'll push yeah. you forward. I'll look. I'm looking. I'll help you because it's so easy just to let somebody know I got your message and you're in my at least in my heart. Yep. And in my thoughts, and even if I can't help you right now. No, it's no. I love no, but I love that you said that because it's so true. Because all of us in the business world, we get hit up all the time, and I that is one thing mm-hmm. I will. Every person that emails me, most of the time, if I'm not interested, I'll be like, "Thanks for you know, thanks. I'm not interested this time. Good luck." period and send it. So they know, did the person get it? Should I send it again? I don't know. Did it go into their junk? There's like all of these things that we do, especially when you're out there looking that it's just like, yep, nope, got it. Not interested. Okay, move on. Right. And then you put, put it on a list. So I love that you said that from all the other, you know, from all the sides. So Ashley, I know you have a meeting um, shortly. So I want to let everyone know where they can find you. So someone's listening Mm -hmm. to this and they're like, this is great, but what do I do? What do I do next? Yeah, no, for sure. They can find me on LinkedIn. It's just my name, Ashley Smith. My profile and information will pop up. I'm also willing to give people my email address. Um, it's Ashley, so A-S-H-L-E-Y dot Smith and NFL.com. And I think to your point to um, Juliet, I- I'm happy to 
reach out and connect with any young professionals, any, you know, members of Thread or people that are interested in Thread, the women's community. Um, I just think about being at a point where, you know, I was trying to get into the league office and I did a lot of messaging people um, on LinkedIn, you know, reaching out to people via email. And I remember there are times where I didn't get responses. Mm -hmm. And while it isn't anything personal, I took it personally. But I also said, okay, when I get an opportunity to sit on the other side of the table, I'm going to reach back out and help those individuals. And I will say this, even when I think about, you know, my career and, and thinking a little more about Cynthia's question of where do I want to be and, and taking it a little bit step further, but what will success look like for me? And I have to go back to Coach um, Pat Head Summit. When you look out and you just look across the landscape of women's basketball and sports and entertainment, you see so many student managers, former players, coaches that are out and that are making an impact on young young men and young women. And so for me, true success will look like at some point when I move on and maybe I've retired or I've, you know, become that president of an NFL club or a senior level executive yes. here. I want to see the reach. I want to see that, hey, you know what? I had a conversation or I mentored this young man, this young woman, and now she's mm. oh my goodness. For, forging a path forward and is basically carrying the torch that I gave her. And even it was so interesting because I have an intern who's working with me and I had to do um, her you know, performance review last week. And she just said, thank you so much. I just don't know how I can ever repay you for just how much you've cared for me and you've guided me and you've pushed me and given me opportunities that maybe other people in this office didn't give me. And I said, just do it to the next person that comes along. Yes. Like, don't owe me anything. The, the biggest way that you can quote unquote repay me for what I've done for you is to reach out and do it for the next person who's coming behind you. Oh, I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love it. So fantastic. Yeah. That's it. No, I know. I was that. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. it. We don't need to say anything else because that is just really beautiful. It's really beautiful. True impact. Yes. And, exactly. and I will say, well, well, when you, when, when you become that president and the head, you know, I'm going to, we're going to send this back out and be like, you heard it first here. <laughs> you heard That's it right. first here. <laughs> I love I it. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you ladies so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. This was awesome. And, you know, if there are any things that I can do to support what you're doing, Juliet, and continue to work with you, Cynthia, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you again so much. And you guys, you know what to do, like, rate, review, and share. And thank you for joining another episode of YNS Live with NFL Thread.